Hi, uh, today I'm going to show you how to do dodging and burning in Darktable using the exposure module. If you are doing landscape photography, you may use to the dodging and burning, the negative kind of dodging and burning, which means that we will um, selectively darken the brightest areas of the picture, so usually the sky, and we will brighten the darkest part of the picture, which are usually the ground. Um, and this negative dodging and burning is intended to bring back um, the dynamic range a bit and help with the global tone mapping in order to um, make the global tone mapping compression a bit less harsh. So it, it, it helps uh, making things a bit more um, well behaved, uh, if you will. In studio photography, portrait and stuff, um, sometimes it happens that the, the light is not falling completely right. Um, usually when, you, like here, when you use a, a very precise lighting setup, um, if the subject is moving a bit, the light is not falling as it is intended. And that's one of, of the of the um, difficulties you have with studio lighting when you are doing very precise lighting. Um, the problem is the subject doesn't have a huge margin, um, a huge motion range, um, and will fall outside of the light very quickly. So in this instance, or um, in other instances where you have like a very even um, lighting, you may want to increase the local contrast on the face. Now, um, you have plenty of local contrast um, operators, uh, options in Darktable. You have the uh, contrast equalizer, you have the local contrast module, and you have the local contrast preset in the diffuse and sharpen module. Um, the problem with the local contrast approach is it it's basically a kind of sharpening um, that will act not on the finest details but on the on the largest features. Uh, so it's a let's call that a kind of um, coarse sharpening. Um, and the problem with this is your ma your latitude of setting is quite narrow and things will start uh, looking weird very fast if you over overdo uh, the local contrast adjustment. Uh, you may uh, make edge artifacts appear. Um, you may increase uh, the fine sharpness, which is not what we want here on, on skin. And, of course, the algorithms are not always super natural looking. Um, especially the local contrast module, I've grown to um, dislike it. Uh, I find that the, the, the kind of um, local contrast boost it gives uh, gets very unnatural, uh, very, very quick uh, as, as you um, increase the setting. And so, you may want to avoid the local contrast adjustments um, because they might not give you a pleasing result and something believable and, 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 and um, natural looking even though I don't really like this word because natural means nothing really but you know what I mean um, when I say natural it's mostly like believable um, something that looks like um, the real thing uh, even though everyone knows that it's been uh, manipulated so, um, there are plenty of dodging and burning by um, drawing uh, tutorials over the internet uh, using Photoshop and using brushes and using perhaps other kind of softwares um, like uh, Krita or Gimp. And I very much like the brush approach to dodging and burning because it gives uh, an organic feeling. It's actually not super... Um, accurate and this inaccuracy gives it this organic look that blends better with the rest of the picture and also you can um, avoid some features so you you may only 
uh, increase the local contrast on the features you're interested in. But since it relies on brush, you need to understand the structure of a face and you need to have some basics in drawing. Uh, if you don't, then you may butcher your picture and make it worse. So I get that photographers who cannot draw properly may prefer to use the automatic kind of uh, dodging and birding. But not, nonetheless, I will show you how to achieve um, the brushed dodging and burning, which I find gives the best result. So... Um, to do this, we will use the exposure module because it's a very um, robust and simple way of doing it. If you've watched uh, dodging and burning um, tutorials on, on uh, Photoshop, you may, or if you have practiced uh, dodging and burning on Photoshop yourself, you may know that dodging and burning will affect the colors um, and the saturation in sometimes unpleasing ways and that's because of how well that's because of the color science in photoshop and so in photoshop people use all sorts of weird blending mode to try to alleviate that so usually um, they will use a brighten blending mode uh, for the do dodging uh, layer and the kind of soft light uh, blending mode for the burning layer and um, here because we use a scene referred workflow with an exposure uh, module we don't need to care about this because the color will be preserved um, and when we affect the exposure of a, a region of the picture it will be exactly as if we would uh, as if we were uh, dialing up and down a dimmer uh, meaning we blast more light or, or we remove some light so we make the light um, more um, you know intense uh, and that's basically what makes it more well better behaved so um, I need to show you here what we will sorry do on the face so the, the basic um, this picture is pretty much finished um, the skin has been corrected uh, the colors are set it's not the, the sharpest picture but we are zoomed in at 100% so it doesn't really matter um, and I will show you what we'll need to do so we first of all we need to assess so the, the direction of the light you see here um, highlight on the on the cheekbone on the uh, yeah cheekbone uh, so the light is oh boy I should not have done that. Okay, so the light is coming from there. Um, the face, the human face, can be approximated by a number of triangles. So you may you have you have one triangle here, and this triangle has a uniform brightness in it you have another triangle or something resembling a triangle here so here is darker here it's brighter um, we may find something like that here a bit brighter here a bit darker so I will cross that here here we have a triangle that is actually not that nice because that's um that's a shadow that is not very pleasing but it's a bit darker and here we have the back of the jaw uh, which is also darker and here we have something brighter um here we have something brighter um and that's about it i think we can do it here as well so it's bright here it's a bit darker um, and here, behind the eye socket, it's a bit darker. So we have interpreted the face as a collection of triangles. Of course, you have the nose here. So here, um, here it's darker as well. Um, and so basically, there are here um, two two places where I have dark sh um, dark patches and I don't want them. So that's here, um, just behind the cheek, the chin, sorry, uh, and 
over um, the eyebrow um, line. So these are not really nice. Um, and I think I will remove them so that's, that will be negative um, dodging. But otherwise, um, I will follow what is already there. And so I will make these areas um, darker um, and the other ones brighter. Um, so let's remove all that. So now we have our plan um, and we have broken the, the face features apart. I will remove all the drawings. Let's take a snapshot. Um, the first the first ex instance will be, sorry, the dodging. So dodging is uh, brightening. So straight on, I will set uh, plus zero, half a half of an EV, like this, and we will do this not with brushes actually, because see how you've seen how well we can approximate the face features with triangles. We will use the path tool. Um, I'll probably put some a triangle here like that. And then another here. So approximate triangles. I'm not married with the triangle uh, shape. Um, it's more like a, a way to formalize things, but it's not really that accurate. Uh, I said we had some unpleasing shadow over here. Um, and then probably I will extend the bright jawline here over um, the back. And that will make the face a bit, um, you, well, you'll see. And perhaps we could add some more definition on the chin, like this. Um, I could also increase the local contrast on the on the makeup. Um, so using again, I I'm following the the brightest spot that are already there. I'm not inventing, except for the ones that I don't want. Okay, and once this is done, maybe I will touch touch up this one because I think we can extend the jawline a bit like that. And so, okay, so we will do it like this. Okay, and obviously all this is not blended, but we don't care because we have the feathering radius and see what will happen as soon as I enable it. Beam. Um, so if you see the before and the after, um, that's obviously too harsh, but we have made things more defined. Um, and using the feathering radius, we don't need to be to mind the transition of um, well the masks. Uh, now the the challenge is to decide how much we want to blend things. So if we don't blend them like this, the features will be made very strong and very def um, very you know harshly defined. Uh, so obviously this is too much, but here, so around 12, um, 20%, 20 pixels, sorry, uh, we have something very defined. And as we increase, we, we make the, we better blend. So there is, this can also be used differently depending on what 
these features you are correcting because some features are uh, finer and some others like the the, the cheek are uh, coarser so you need to adjust that in any case i will remove a quarter of ev in lightness and that's already much better so you see how good it looks um and since here i already have a bright spot i will double the drawn masks with the parametric mask and with the parametric mask i will exclude the brightest parts in order to avoid over brightening what's already bright see now that's better so that's the before and that's the after and now i can maybe make it a bit more a bit sharper in the in the um in the mask blending i mean i could also increase the um spine of the the nose here but not sure it will be a triangle okay see Now I will do the same, but this time with the burning, which means we will darken. So let's remove a quarter of EV, um, sorry, the other way around, that's a minus. And again, draw stuff like this. So we had um, a triangle here, which is not really a triangle actually, but follow that this way um i want to make the nose the side of the nose a bit more defined so that's again another triangle uh probably under the mouth i will darken it as well just to join this shadow um a bit and i think uh, we will go back in the dodging to uh, later later to uh, make that more subtle and then the back of the jaw here and again feather all that bingo So let's bring back um, okay this new triangle here that appeared is not very looks weird so let's see the first one by the way it's very important that you name your instances of exposure because otherwise you will get lost and if you reopen this edit in a couple of months you will hate yourself for not having the discipline of labeling things correctly make a favor to yourself to your future self and be disciplined when you edit stuff so you see here i removed the shadow i think that looks a bit better um but now this is not super nice and i want to merge or maybe not actually the other way around yeah probably better so i'm doing this with the wacom uh, graphic tablet by the way so we will extend the shadow underneath the jaw um and here i feel like okay so 
I'm happy with the shapes, I think. Oh, I forgot the rear, the back of the eye socket here. Okay. Um, this looks nice regarding how the light and the shadows are distributed, but... But um, minus a quarter of EV looks a bit too much. So I will make this a bit more gentle. I find that usually when you darken you need to be more gentle. Um, it has an, a darker, it has a more pronounced effect. Okay. And... Um, <laughs> There's something else I want to do. I, I think that the, the bottom of the cheekbone here, the shadow of the cheekbone is too dark compared to the rest. So I will go on this particular mask and I will decrease the opacity, which is control and scroll down. So I will probably put that down to 80% opacity or something. Or even like uh, less. Okay, and let's see the before and the after. That's the before and that's the after. So we have made all that, the face a bit more glowing by adding more light. We didn't change the color, the U or the, well, we changed the, the chroma, but we didn't change the saturation. So the saturation is constant. Um, and overall, it's reasonably, we've, given back a bit of volume on the up, on the upper cheekbone. Um, a bit more definition, a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more control. I still think that the, the shadow underneath here is too harsh. So let's move that. Okay. This job is actually what we do when we are doing makeup. Uh, and actually, I did this particular makeup. Um, and so basically, when you want to make someone look younger, um, more uh, healthier, um, and, and, and uh, more uh, skinny, what you have to do is to bring the, the highlights on the upper parts of the... the the face so that's on the on the forehead on the cheekbones and and especially um if you want to make someone looks look like um well look more skinny um you have to increase the shadow here in the cheekbone to get a feeling of uh, of a hollow thing so you have a depression in the in the face um, and that's how you make people look a bit um, skinnier. If this was to look, um, if I see, uh, for the example, if I increase yeah, the brightness in on the cheekbone, she's starting to gain weight perceptually. And that's uh so here it doesn't look that much because i decreased the opacity okay like this but now with this kind of uh dodging so i you see that i took the burning um instance and i i set it in dodging mode which means i i brightened the parts the, the features that i previously had darkened and you see that with this setting she's looking uh, fatter because I basically made her face more plain more um, you know field um, and that's a that's a usual trick that you may use in any kind of portrait photography um, when you want to have people look um, skinnier than they are it's just a matter of putting the highlights <coughs> sorry on the upper parts uh, and there is no liquify 
there is no um, retouching thing involved in here. It's a simple light trick. You can do it on the set by with um, how you set the light, the position of the lights. Uh, but you can also do it in post by just um, tinkering with the brightness and the darkness. But there is no, you see that um, it's a, it's a relatively fast, good looking, and efficient to you know make the face glow like this. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you the next the next time.